he's back, but is he back to his former winning ways? It would be exciting to see how Mark Cavendish gets on in his return to the Tour de France this summer. Will he win a stage or two? Well, here's hoping. Anyway, I'm not here to speculate on his form and race winning potential. Instead, I thought it'd be fascinating and interesting to look back at the bikes he has raced throughout his long career. And looking at the bikes Cavendish has raced is to witness the development of the racing bicycle. He started on non-aero frames with mechanical 10-speed group sets and ends his career on an aero frame with electronic group sets and disc brakes. Okay, let's dive in. Mark Cavendish began his career as a track cyclist with Team GB, but when he switched to the road, his first race bike was a giant TCR Advance. This was in 2005 with a German continental outfit called Team Sparkes, a feeder team to World Tour squad Team Mobile. The results came thick and fast and in 2006 he stepped up to the World Tour team and continued to ride a giant TCR Advance. The bikes then were equipped with the latest Shimano Durace 7800 group set, a mechanical 10 speed group set considered by some to be the best Durace group set ever made. 2007 was arguably his breakthrough year and he remained with Team Mobile and a giant TZR advanced race bike for another season. This was his first full year as a top level pro and with the Tour de France starting in London, he quickly became a household name. Just don't mention the fact he crashed on the first two stages and abandoned on the eighth stage. Another year aboard the giant TZR advanced whilst the Team Mobile team had changed to Team High Road. Despite only riding the first 13 stages of the Tour de France due to training for the 2008 Beijing Olympics, Cavendish picked up his first Tour de France stage win. In fact, he picked up four stage wins, well on his way to his current record of 30. And he did it on the giant TZR Advanced. After a few years on the giant TZR Advanced then, in 2009, Cavendish switched to a Scott Addict. The Addict was Scott's highly advanced carbon race bike designed to be as light and stiff as possible. The Addict had been around for a few years by the point, first launched in 2001 with a sub one kilogram frame, making it at the time one of the lightest carbon road frames you could buy. They even had a model that weighed less than six kilograms. The bike was clearly good then and so was Cavendish. He won an incredible six stages at the Tour de France this year. He continued with the same team and bike into 2010. In 2011, Cavendish made his first switch to specialised bicycles and also made the transition from a normal road bike to an aero optimised race bike. He raced aboard the brand new Venge. This was a bike designed for speed, a perfect match for the Maxman's awesome sprinting ability. The bike was developed with McLaren over five years and it clearly paid off. Cavendish won five stages of the Tour de France this year and the green jersey. And he crowned the season by becoming the world champion with the help of some cling film on his helmet, giving us a concept of an aero road helmet for the first time. 2012 was a big year for British cyclists as Cavendish joined Team Sky to ride alongside Bradley Wiggins, who would go on to be the first British rider to ever win the Tour de France. A new team meant another new bike, so he switched to Pinarello and the flagship Dogma 60.5. He won three stages in the Tour de France this year and was helping Bradley Wiggins win a yellow jersey. Then it was the London 2012 Olympics where he was a hot favourite for the road race. He didn't ride a Pinarello, instead Team GB were given specially designed bikes based on the track bikes that were so successful. Unfortunately, Camdish didn't win the race. He moved to the Belgian Quickset team for the first time in 2013 and was reacquainted with a specialised Venge. The Venge hadn't changed much in his absence, launched two years earlier. On this bike, he won the British national title and two stages of the Tour de France. On to 2014 and another year aboard a specialised Venge Mark 1, but he sadly crashed out of the Tour de France in Harrogate, a year to forget. 2015 marked the end of his first stint with a Belgian super team Quickstep, and he saw out his final season with the updated specialised Venge Vias. This bike was a big leap in terms of aerodynamics and all that pursuit of making the fastest bike possible and damn the compromises. Special claimed the bike was four minutes faster than a regular non-aero road bike 
and cleared it faster than the old Venge. It was far from perfect though, the brakes were trickily set up and the looks, shall we say, weren't everyone's cup of tea. 2016 marked the start of a new relationship, both with Dimension Data and Cervelo. Cervelo is a company that pioneered aero road bikes and so naturally he rode the S5, a bike reported to be one of the fastest aero bikes ever made. The bike was pretty trick with NV wheels and rotor chain sets and clearly did him no harm. He won four stages in the Tour de France and got to wear the yellow jersey. Camdish continued with the Dimension Data team and Cervelo S5 bikes for the next two years, but the results started drying up. 2018 was also a year to forget aboard his Cervelo S5 when he finished outside a time cut on stage 11 of the Tour and went home without winning a stage. As in previous years, the bike was spec with a Durace group set, rotor cranks, MV wheels, and he did get some nice customized paint jobs. Into 2019, and Cervelo was replaced by BMC, a bike sponsor, and the Dimension Data team. By now, Camdish is well used to swapping bikes and getting used to different equipment, but this time he ride disc brakes for the first time. BMC offered the team a choice of models like the Team Machine or Round Race Bike, but it was a Time Machine Aero Race Bike he preferred. Into 2020, and another year, and another bike. There was lots of expectation when enjoying the Bahrain McLaren team and Merida, one of the biggest bike brands in the world, were quite rightly hoping for some of his magic to rub off on their bikes and sell more bikes. It wasn't a great year though, as COVID-19 halted all racing. So sadly, we didn't get to see the Reacto Aero Race bike being used by Camdish in much racing at all. And so that all brings us neatly to 2021, and it's a return for Mark Camdish to his old Quickset team and reunited with their specialized bicycles. With the Venge, a bike that Cavendish used so convincingly all those years ago, now dropped from a specialized range, his bike of choice is the latest Tarmac SL7. It's a bike that inherits most of the aero design of the Venge into a frame that's much lighter. It's also a bike available only with disc brakes. In summary then, Mark's career has spanned some interesting and significant developments in road bike design. He started racing before disc brakes, before aero and before electronic gears, but fully embraced aerodynamics halfway through his career and then started using disc brakes and electronic gears in more recent years. So here it's a Mark Cavendish having a great Tour de France and hopefully, fingers crossed, winning a stage or two on the new Specialized Tarmac SL7. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed watching the video and if you did, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you all again next time. Thank you so much for watching.